Hello NQ Jazz fans and welcome to this week's episode of the NQ Jazz podcast featuring my interview with the four fine folks of Let's Spin. We talk about a whole range of topics from their latest album Steal the Light out on FP Records to Moss Freed needing to crush the hopes and dreams of young teenage saxophonists to normal gimbal to all sorts of things in between. So please sit back and enjoy the interview with Let's Spin. So, hello everyone. Welcome to the NQ Jazz Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us all. Can you please give us a quick intro as to who you all are uh, and what you play? Moss, do you want to kick us off, please? Yeah, I'm Moss, Moss Freed. I play guitar um, and that's it. Beautiful. Finn? I am Finn and I play drums. Finn plays the drums and Ruth? Uh, I'm Ruth and I play the electric bass. And yeah, that way, Chris. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Williams. I play alto saxophone in this band. And um, every Sunday, I decide to rock it. <laughs> this really fantastic. <laughs> so, listen, how how is everyone keeping in in strange conditions? And and where are you all in in the world right now? Great. Yeah. Just look at me. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So, Finn, <laughs> Finn, I presume you're over in Berlin. I'm in Berlin, yeah, and um, coping okay. Yeah. Uh, so far, yes, sort of. I mean, it's yeah, it's crazy, right? It's um, crazy times, and two small kids and a small apartment. But we are allowed outside uh, a bit more than than I think in the UK. Yeah. I don't, I don't know exactly, but. I feel, I feel like we, we are, which is good, because we don't have a garden or anything, we just have a, a flat. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's pretty full on with, like, with kids. Uh, but also, even without kids, it would probably be pretty full on anyway. So. <laughs> and is, is everyone else in London? Is that where you guys are all, all based? Yeah, ne- near enough, yeah. Near yeah. enough, all, all in. outside London, yeah. Great. And, and you're all keeping positive? Well, Chris, Chris is loving life. <laughs> <laughs> you, all, you all seem in very, very good spirits, which is, which is beautiful. How have you been? Well, Moss may, may disagree. No, it's, it's, it's nice to see each other. I think that's one reason why I'm smiling. Hmm. We haven't really get, had a chance to see each other for a while. And we have yeah, we've never done, never done this before. We should do this more often, guys. With the yeah. Band yeah. chat. Isn't it basically the rule that you have to have some sort of quiz in place? That's the only way people are allowed to socially interact online now. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried one of those. Obviously, it's, kind of, it's going to go on for quite some time, but my initial reaction, and obviously it's very devastating what's happening, and it highlights how privileged I am to be in this position to be able to take a step back and be able to reflect on things, and it feels... I felt like an immediate sense of relief to not have this like just ongoing pressure of just like having to do stuff or feeling like I'm doing stuff or need to do stuff, feeling guilty for not doing enough stuff. Yeah. That might I mean, I immediately knew, well, I couldn't do anything, but also that at the same time I knew that no one could really do anything, or at least how we knew it at that time. Yeah. So I just felt like a sense of relief and I could just read a bunch of books that I've been waiting to read for years and Oh, I am just, for you. Just yeah. take it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, no, I'm so privileged right now. But yeah, at least like initially, I was just like, it just felt just quite deep, just how it was just like a, just felt to just like enjoy this, this like pace of life. Fantastic. Is, has that been a, a similar feeling for most of you, just enjoying taking a step back? or if, Yeah, um, for me, yeah. it's been, I've really enjoyed it on a personal level you know obviously I don't want this to happen but um mm. it's just been having time for once it's just something I've I'd completely forgotten about what that feels like yeah. you know <laughs> having a, like an, I feel like a normal person now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's got a little bit of routine and it's not always like on the next thing what am I doing next what am I doing next you know and I've got any... time for stuff that's I never had time Brilliant. before you know even just going for a walk for like half an hour every day and practicing stuff that I want to practice and not learning some music for yeah. some some project or you know working on something specific it's just yeah it's really really good and it's I really hope I can 
take something away from that afterwards well, as that, well that was going to be my next question is do you do you all feel like <laughs> you're going to approach your life and work balance in a in a different way after having gone through this experience well i don't know how, if it's going to be possible you know because if if everyone does that then if things are going to change a little bit because of that then it might be possible but if everything goes back to before then it's not going to be possible for me to go back you know keep this kind of lifestyle that i've got now and just i'm gonna sure. have to be doing the same things again the same way that i've been doing before but i mean yeah you... little things i be able to change but mm -hmm. you know but would it affect how you prioritize certain things within your your life and routine i don't know because i've I feel like I've already been prioritizing things sure. before that, like, you know, filtering out stuff that I don't necessarily want to do or that I feel like I shouldn't be doing. And so <laughs> I don't know whether that'd be possible. Hopefully sure. like, mm -hmm. I'll have to see. Yeah. But yeah, Moss, are you keeping well? Not yeah. Oh, I'm pretty good. All in all. Yeah. There's just, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on. I'm, I'm in a sim more similar position to Finn with a kid around. So, you know, I'm finding myself with pretty much as, as much work as I had other than gigs, but like half the time that I had. And uh, right. <laughs> cause I've, cause I've now got no childcare. So, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, um, it's pretty intense, but uh, you know, there's a lot of positive things coming out as well on a personal level, just having more family time and, um, doing some of the stuff around the house that I've been meaning to do and haven't been able to do, and, you know, but I really, I'm really missing playing. And this week was, was when we were supposed to be on tour. So that's kind of, you know, that's, that's been a bit of a, a moment to reflect and think, Oh, you know, that would be, I was, it was something that I think we were all really looking forward to, yeah. which is why it's great that we can at least do this and, and have a chat with you and, um, and it's fantastic you got the, that funding. Yeah, thank you very much. And obviously, thank you to the Arts Council. Thank you for, <laughs> yeah, for letting us carry on with everything we're doing. It's, yeah, it make, makes a massive difference. We had, um, we had funding for our live series from through the last year, and we were just coming to the end of that anyway. And thankfully, it, it had gone better than we had budgeted for. So we had a bit of surplus cash sitting in the bank so we were basically planning to just keep using that for as long as we could to keep paying some musicians to do some concerts and just just basically keep some money moving around the scene for as long as we could but obviously getting a, another grant means that we can actually just keep that indefinitely until we're all up and running with in the flesh gigs again so so that's mm. that's really good i'm really happy about that but yeah so obviously the the four of you are, are all wonderful human beings individually but collectively you are the the wondrous thing that is let's spin and there it's a band with a, i suppose fairly strong manchester ties as well which is nice for us as a, a manchester based night moss and finn you both lived in manchester for for a good bit didn't you um, did. Finn, yeah. Finn, you studied at the the uni here, is that right? That's how you. The ended Northern. Up. Oh, you were at the Northern as well, yeah. yeah. So, so that's how you ended up in in Manchester. But Moss, you you studied elsewhere, didn't you? And then ended up living. Yeah. In, that, what? How did Manchester come about for you? Well, I'm I'm from Manchester. Ah, right. great. Okay. So born and bred, and then went oh, off yes. to university and college, and then came back then and, and spent I think three or four years living there uh start you know gigging and that's where i met finn and we played together in various guises um, <laughs> 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 yeah so when when was that finn that would have been uh been 2007 six or seven, eight you? yeah well 2008 was when i started at the northern so i know the two of you were around and and active at that time certainly um because moss I'd, I'd been studying with uh kenji before i went to ah. uh, the rncm so I'd, i knew you through the through the kenji fenton link yes um, before mm. then uh, the kenji fenton experience yeah <laughs> indeed yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um so so great so then i suppose um the the other strong manchester link is fp records 
with you guys. Yes. Um, so are, are all three of your albums out with FP? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And also, and obviously, Finn, you're in Beats and Pieces, uh, which is mm -hmm. big, big FP action. But my, my lovely discovery of uh, research and for this podcast was uh, Normal Gimbal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, which made me extremely happy. Uh, <laughs> right, right from the, the name of the album, I Like You, Bite You, which is, which is great, to the, to the artwork as well, which, which then I saw was Matthew Herbert, which is, <laughs> which is fantastic. No, it's Tom, Tom Herbert. Oh, it's Tom Herbert. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom husband. Herbert. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Great, R messed up me Herbert. Sorry, but um, <laughs> yeah. so that 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 for people who are not aware of normal gimbal, um, which there may be some people out there, uh, that's your vocal duo with Alice Grant. Yeah, how how did that come about? If you if the rest of you don't mind me going into not the normal gimbal hole for a second. <laughs> yeah, well, me and Alice we've been friends for a long time, and we live together in the house in Brixton. Chris also lived there. So right. it was sort of a friend's house for a while. And um, we just, it was kind of a coincidence, like just playing some double stops, practicing some double stop things on the bass. And Alice was just around the house and we just started kind of experimenting with singing both lines. And then the bass kind of dropped away and we just sang it like that. and. And yeah, we just, it was like that and it was great. And we just started writing for it and it just became a thing. The funniest thing being about this band that Alice obviously is a amazing singer, proper singer, and I'm not. <laughs> and we, we used to do gigs and um, because it's so exposed just doing two, um, two, you know, just singing in front of people without a band behind you is, mm terrifying and I used to get so nervous that I would just anything would just set the smallest little thing would just set me off and I would just start laughing in the gig and not be able to stop anymore and Chris has I'm sure Chris has witnessed many of those gigs where I was just literally on the floor like crying you know when you're so nervous that you start laughing and you can't stop that happens to me that kind of thing Already as a kid, I was like that. Always when I wasn't allowed to laugh, I'd just be laughing. I couldn't stop. <laughs> I'd just be on the floor, like holding my head like that in a little bowl, just like crying of laughter. And Alice was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have to stop now. <laughs> Literally every single gig used to end like this. Um, it was kind of part of the normal gimbal experience. I think people started coming because they wanted to see that in the end as well. <laughs> So has, has, has normal gimbal been active in the last while, or no? It hasn't been active. No, no it's so, sort of so it's due a comeback. That's what you're well, saying. Well, <laughs> we're kind of doing the, the the adult version of normal gimbal. At <laughs> my, my own project where Alice sings as well, and I sing, and it's a little bit different, but right. So it's it, it's it's evolved. Fantastic. What's, what's the name of that group? Come on, what's the name of this group? Uh, it's what's called the name it's called what, too? Uh, Skilla, and it's, it's a vocal ah, yes. trio as well, with Lauren Kinsella as well, and, but, and electric bass and Fantastic. playing. So it's, it's, it's easier. In, it's incredible. It's, it's beautiful amazing. stuff, yeah. Amazing and stuff. And they've got gigs, gigs are back in the diary, coming back in the diary, right, with the bands? Yeah, well, some have just been postponed to October now. We're mm -hmm. supposed to have one in May, and it's been postponed to the 20th of October um yeah so just rescheduling you know yeah oh great well look forward to to hearing more from that that'd be that'd be brilliant yeah. so so i suppose chris then um you've got three albums out uh, you guys with with fp let spin let go and steal the light is the the most recent one which we'll have a, a bit more of an in-depth chat about in a bit but when uh -huh. when did the band start up because obviously then Moss and Finn, did you move to London for a bit? Or how did you get involved with Let's Spin if the rest were down there? How did the whole thing come to be? That's a good question. That is, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, I didn't move to London. I moved uh, to Berlin, where I still am. And it, uh, I think after about a year of living here, not even a year, because I moved in September 2009, and then in the May, we did our first tour, right? 
I think no, maybe it was actually ooh the year after that. I don't you were know definitely that. you were definitely living in Berlin. Basically, what, ha- what happened was I can tell the story because it was sorry for. <laughs> Um, because it came from, it was originally a, a Moss Project tour. That's ah, where it yeah. came from. So my other band, which has not been active for a while, and I can't, I don't know, I haven't thought about it for a while. Anyway, we had a tour with that, and we got some funding from Jazz Services, erstwhile, uh, you know, Jazz Services, rest in peace. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but two of the people in Moss Project couldn't do it last minute. And so I had this tour, six or seven gigs and no band, but Ruth was still available. And it was like, well, do we cancel the the tour, rearrange it or do something new? So um, I think, yeah, Chris and I played together maybe once or I think so, yeah. And Ruth said, oh, let's get Chris. (laughs) <laughs> and then we thought, oh, well, we need a drummer. And I thought, well, Finn. And yeah. I thought, well, he's in Berlin, which is not ideal, but, you know, <laughs> come over for a tour and we'll see what happens. Uh, and at least then it's worth coming over. Yeah. And that was it. Came over and we met on the first first gig of the tour. Brilliant. And we all got together and rehearsed and did the tour. And that was the start of the band. Was it in Liverpool, our first ever gig? It was at, it was at your parents' place. We went, we went to my parents, didn't we, and rehearsed mm-hmm. in the, uh, the dining room. Yeah. Amazing. But they had the first gig. But it just, it just, it just clicks. It just felt just, just great straight away. Like, yeah. And, uh, yeah, just after, those, after that run of gigs, we just said, let's just, we've got to record this. So just later that summer, we just went in the studio and had, I think, just one day, mostly. mostly. We perhaps set up the evening before, but then we just recorded in one day the first record. Um, <laughs> but it was, just, it was just immediately just fun and enjoyable and, yeah, lovely. I'm, I'm, I'm also, it's just coming back into my head without wanting to make uh, anyone feel marginally uncomfortable um but that that cancelled moss project tour um so speaking of kenji again uh i got a call to dep with the moss project uh for a gig <laughs> from kenji i think he like fixed me up so i was already i moved moved some stuff around for the evening so i could come and do the gig and then i got a call from kenji going ah uh, moss is a uh, Moss decided to book someone else. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I've, I've, not, I've, I've not thought about that for years because that was, I mean, that would have been 2008 or nine. It was my first year um, at, at college. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's just come flooding back oh, to me. <laughs> well, we missed an opportunity there. That would have been great. <laughs> It would have been fun, but there you go. I'm sure you must, must on, always must always pause on. this kind of stuff, man. He's always he's always, up to the <laughs> always messing yeah. people up. It, it, it turned out the rest of Moss Project could make the tour, but he was just like, no, I'm gonna call the guy. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get Finn over from Berlin. <laughs> Why don't we have a, a listen to some some music so everyone can hear what you're all about? So the first track that you've picked out is from. Uh, the Opus Club in in Budapest, and that was from your tour at the start of this year. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the tour? Um, yeah, it was a great tour, and it was just in time because this all this crisis kicked off. It was happening at the time, Jim. We were on that long train ride going through about seven different countries, thinking, "Hmm, this this is bad for spreading viruses." <laughs> um, yeah, we got this. Uh, we got the train from Budapest to Dresden. A nine-hour train, that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, the tour was, was great. Um, we did uh, London, it was very short. Just We did London and then Budapest, Opus Jazz Club, then Dresden, the Jazz Tunner, and then uh, Berlin, the Kunstfabrik Schlott. Uh, wow. And that was it, and it was lovely. Just a really nice little tour. Um, to play all our new stuff off the album. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it was probably the first tour I've ever organized. I, I don't, I'm not known for booking gigs. And uh, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the guys were really nice. They were like, this is really a good tour. Well done, Finn. You know, I got all really good praise 
Um, so I'm not going to do another one in case it's any slightly worse. <laughs> <laughs> Just get Quit in it. with the bag and then straight out again, you know. Excellent. Uh, I can't it. make any tours anyway. So, you know, now that's it. Well, yeah, very so, true. Really Great. Nice, so, so, so this track that you've picked out is Loss, but it starts out with uh, an extended uh, bit of bass playing from Ruth. Uh, so sit back and enjoy. This is Loss.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. So that was that was Loss from the Opus Jazz Club in, in Budapest earlier this year. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, there is a new album out that only came out uh, a few weeks ago, um, three or four weeks ago now. Um, how's that been going so far? Everyone, everyone been excited with new album out? Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> because we were supposed to be playing now, you know, it's always... I know. So it kind of feels like it's very different, isn't it, to just have something out online and exactly. Uh, but but I suppose a big a big positive is ah uh, oh, there it is. In yeah. the there it is. Oh, oh well done, great. Right. Yeah. So we just oh, get a lot of love yeah. for it. So you know. Yeah. This, this is what I was going to yeah. say. If you know, if you have some gigs cancelled, that's beautiful. That, that's just that. But if you have an album coming out um, anyway, at least there's still a load of m music happening that people can engage with and be excited yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah it's so, actually been really nice, um, you know, not only you getting in touch and saying, well, we're going to do something and try and try and get a bit of a buzz going and, you know, whatever this stuff. Um, we, we've had a couple of other people, other promoters who are saying nice things online and even just a little yeah. tweet here and there, or it's <laughs> just <laughs> watching Finn. Um, so it's been, it's been really great. You know? I feel, I feel like the community, there's, there's a heightened community spirit around this and everyone's trying to help each other out. And, mm. um, and obviously feel people, like, yeah. people like Bandcamp doing nice exactly. gestures and waving fees and all of that. Really. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, just a buzz. We've, yeah, and we've had quite a few downloads and, and physical sales, so that's all going really well and it's kept me busy, certainly packing them up. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's all right, that's, that's our walk for the day. We go down to the post box. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Excellent. Nice. So, um, what I was interested in is how how you feel maybe the trajectory of the band has changed across the three albums. So where, where you've arrived at now with obviously quite a, quite an, a new product. Um, how, how do you feel that reflects on the, the years that the band's been together? Cause three albums and, you know, seven, eight years of, of being together now, that's a, that's a, a really solid long run for a group of people to be working together. Um, how, how do you feel things have, have changed over that time? Either, intentionally or or unintentionally i felt i felt in some ways i feel like it's like there's been something that's been quite constant just mm -hmm. about the band and not in a not in a stagnant way just uh i think just from, from the beginning from its inception as moss said earlier even though it came from uh came from one of his tours like this the idea that all of us are in this together and there's like an equal share of people bringing in compositions and the idea of yeah, it's all running the band together collectively um so and I feel as if that's just we've really without con like constantly talking about that we've just kept hold of that throughout with each album. In a certain way, there's something that the the continuity of it means that it feels there's something that feels very uh, I want to say just more than just like nice, but just kind of like safe about it. But I feel like the way, perhaps we're just all able to kind of just take risks. I feel like with our with our compositions and with our writing. And and I feel like I feel like we're all kind of feel safe to take more risks with our playing as well. I think mm. we're all playing together. So there's something that yeah, that's something that I really like about that. That just through the nature of how we are, how, how all of us are together, that it just feels quite organic the way that the music is kind of progressing. It's not really been from a set up right. I think our next record should be like this. I mean, we've we've talked about it in some ways, but a lot of it has been left down to what's what's come out of our writing and what then comes out of our playing. Um, but yeah, second to that, I guess with each record um, that we've also just loved uh, collaborating with Alex Kilpatrick, who's been who's been our, sort of just been our marching engineer, but then mixing the records and then and then just being more and more a producer, and especially with this last record, Still the Light, he's I just we just all just love so much his input and his ears and what he brings to it that I feel as if that he's just such a part of our sound as well. Great, yeah. Something for me, at least, that just that certainly came out from just from this last record, just because we had Alex involved in it so much more, um, that we just perhaps thought about, well, how can we make our live sounds kind of reflect what, what we've been doing in the studio and how this how this album really came, came together, because a lot more of it was from post-production. Um, and 
and actually it wasn't so much just because of Let's Spin, but just with another uh, band of playing with Sounds Be Cool While, he's asked me to get more involved with effects and electronics. So I've been kind of building up um, a bit of a collection. And and actually our, our gigs in February um, was the first time that I brought this new collection of sounds uh, right. to Let's Spin. And, and it was just, uh, well, I think we talked about it and we all just really enjoyed just how much, how much of an impact it had on, on how we played and the music. So, and it brought, felt like it kind of brought us closer to how the saxophone in particular was kind of treated um, through Alex Kilpatrick's work, but then also just how much it then just made all of us just kind of play and interact in different ways. So just hearing, actually hearing back some of these uh, just, uh, recordings from, from that tour just recently because Ben saw these videos out, it's, uh, it's really exciting to hear it again. And yeah, I think that for us, we really thrive off of, I guess not loads of bands, but we really thrive from just having a bunch of dates and then just the music really growing and evolving from that. Yeah, I think that's an important thing as well. Is that this we've we've been going for quite a long time, but it, it it's very it's not a uh, constant activity. You know, we have mm. kind of uh, bursts of of energy and do a thing, make a record, do a tour, and then we kind of go off and do our own things. And I think this is one of the beautiful things about this project. That the energy that we have, that we that we come together and four of us bring our energies, and that's always just clicked from day one. We were just able to play and and improvise together and just and go in different directions and feel safe and feel exploratory and that just all worked. And that still stays there, but we go off in between these periods of activity and you know, like well, Ruth spends six months. <laughs> you wanted to get involved with that sorry fair enough um no it's just you know like like ruth skiller projects you know, spent ages focusing on that and like trying all these different techniques out and then bring some of those ideas back into mm -hmm. this band chris goes going off and and exploring effects with sarathy and then bringing that back in but the energy still stays there but we've got this mm -hmm. kind of broadened palette each time we get together or a different palette even, it kind of shifts around sometimes. Um, and obviously compositionally, we're always exploring different things individually, bringing those things together. Um, so we're always kind of like the same, like Chris says, but always every time we get together, it's always slightly different as well. Yeah. No, it's great. And and something that you've, you've both alluded to is, you know, it's obviously a very egalitarian band and um, everyone everyone plays their part in composition and, and organization, all of this. To begin with though, obviously this, this stemmed as a, as a stand in for a Moss project tour, as you were saying. So presumably it began with exclusively your compositions, did it? No, it, that was actually from, from the very outset. Um, it was, it was something, it's, it's an idea that I've actually played with a few times with different, I, I don't know if you remember this, what did I used to do? I started this thing in Manchester, and it was again, it was like a, there was a date and it needed a band. And I got a bunch of people together and I said, okay, well, here's the deal. Everyone's going to bring a tune. <laughs> and then we, and then we've got this band where everyone's writing for it and we can do a gig really easily. Great. And it was the same. I've always been interested in that idea. So that was very much from the outset was, okay, well, we've got these dates. We need four great musicians, but also great composers, people who can bring their, their music to this project. So absolutely from that tour, we all brought two or three tunes from the very first rehearsal. Great. And I think, I think the difference is that at the, the first set of tunes that we brought were tunes that we'd written before playing together or before knowing each other. So yeah. they weren't written for each other. Yeah. And that in, on the second, from the second album, and the third album obviously has changed because mm -hmm. we started, well, at least me, you know, I started with writing with these guys in mind, like what they, you know, their sounds, mm. their, their playing, everything. So I think that's, that's what, I, I think it still sounds like you can, it's still quite obvious who writes what, you know, if you sort of deeper and listen to the, all the albums, maybe you can probably tell the kind of stuff, but, um, I think it has a more from the second album onwards. It has a more um, band sound because of that, you know, because yeah. we know each other's strengths and and we write we start writing to that more. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And there was a bunch of things, ideas, uh, just on a personal level, I can talk about that I got from that first tour, seeing the kinds of compositions you guys were bringing. Right. And yeah. how you were approaching improvisation sections, other things like that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I started to incorporate some of those ideas. So I, I presume that must have gone a bit like that with mm. your review. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then to to the other side of being in a, an egalitarian project is does does one person take most of the lead in the the schlep side of things? <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the the booking and organising and and promo and all of that, or is that uh, are you quite good at spreading that around as well? We try to, yeah. We've mm. always tried to um, to split that up. Um, you know, I think at certain times, certain periods, again, because uh, we've been going for a while, certain periods of time, someone is going to take more of a lead in certain things than others. Um, I think, you know, Chris and I did a lot of the booking of gigs for a while, but then Finn did loads for this tour. Mm. Um, and you know everyone yeah everyone just just does lots of different things there's a lot of activity that is involved with running something like this yeah. it does mean that uh, decisions can take a painful painfully <laughs> long time because every I single know, I, thing i don't know what you're talking about what are you <laughs> talking about um, I, I know. Never washed your dirty laundry in public. Bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Moss and Finn, you you guys at least, I'm sure, will know Baked Talascar. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've I've been in Baked Talascar for ten years, so nine years, something like that. Um, but that's an eleven piece, uh, you know, democratic outfit, wow. and that's that for me has been the pinnacle of how it's very hard to get anything done <laughs> with that. <laughs> With that, wow. people all you can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, but it's great. Uh, it, it has massive positives as well, of course. But um, chaos is definitely the the overarching theme. <laughs> <laughs> but great. So um, you've Finn, you've picked out a second track for us uh, from from the same tour earlier this year. Um, so with with this, you said you know you've got multi multi cam and all sorts. Did you did you set out very intentionally wanting to get a good quality recording? of each of the gigs on this tour yeah i mean it's um it's what you have to do these days isn't it um everyone's recording all their gigs with many cameras and making brilliant videos and that's how promoters actually want they want to see that they just want videos now um and we're just a little bit slow on that because we're all well some of us are quite old i don't <laughs> older than what I mean by that is older than the kids who are like in their kids. teens still. There's, you know, especially around here, there's, there's 18 year old kids making Instagram videos every day, you know, yeah. uh, and they're sending that to promoters and they're able to get gigs very effectively. Um, and those oldies are just like, you know, it's, we have to compete with that. So uh, with that in mind, I sort of had a realization one day that, yeah, we need to be doing that and um, bought a camera uh got some video editing software which i can't use and then made some videos um, but yeah it's it's a work in progress um it's what you got to do like like yeah it's um it's the only way uh i think promoters can really see what bands are about these days with so much going on um sure. i think it's also just a great way to to help grow your your audience base isn't it you know I think people of know. course yeah the audience the audience is the other part i didn't mention yet yeah <laughs> they, all, they also want to see um bands on on youtube and all these exactly. places and well, just, you know, a good a good clip on social media goes such a long way now to to people wanting to check out your album and stream and download and and all the rest so yeah you, you've got a wealth from the sounds of it from the start of the year so Happy days. You can you can you can live through lockdown on your your tour tour videos. Uh, this one is from the shop in in Berlin, uh, and this is one of the tracks off the the new album. We we as of yet do not know what track this is going to be. It's a little mystery. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna sit back and enjoy uh, this tune from from the tour uh, off the new album. Enjoy. <laughs>
Okay, lovely. Thank, thanks very much, guys. Uh, that, that was beautiful. Um, I would like to ask you about plans for the future now. Um, I know, obviously, it's pretty heartbreaking having your, your tour cancelled for the moment, uh, yeah. but I presume you are looking to, to reschedule for... <laughs> <laughs> for the near future when what what are the plans afoot no i mean it's yeah just at the moment it's just like that i know that everyone's in the everyone's obviously in the same position right now but yeah just looking to try and have this tour happen early next year um and yeah we haven't really we haven't actually talked about it but because there's been there was quite a gap between for various reasons but quite a gap between the, when we first started working on this record, recording this record, and actually it's release day, um, so it's been quite a while since we've since we've actually written, well not worked on any kind of new material, but also because this new material still feels so new, so we actually haven't played it all that much, and it's, it's so much of it still. I feel like there's so much growth to come from playing playing it still, um, but I I think that by the time because this yeah enforced lockdown by the time we actually do get to play together again like, and have a bunch of dates together I, I feel like it, it would be it would be a really good time to think about a good time to like think about having some more material and perhaps looking into how, how we can kind of build up some more momentum for the for, for this band for it, for, for it to mm. go forward um i think yeah i think it would be a good a good time to think about trying to do some more some more recording guys yeah. what do you think yeah, yeah, well up for it. And so, when when was album three <laughs> recorded? The the recent album. Was it 2017, right? Right. Mm. It was summer it was 2017. June, June 2017. Yeah. 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 So that that has yes. been quite quite a quite a a gap. Yeah, and and it get, I mean, just I guess it perhaps with this with this album that we did go on quite a quite a journey with it, and that uh, yeah. um. When we first recorded it, so we recorded it is in uh, Hull, right? Moss is it yeah. right, where where Moss was uh, undertaking his PhD, mm. um, and so <laughs> but it was recorded in this really cool space, and and but it was, it was a very it's quite a clinical uh, kind of quite a clean kind of sound, dry sound, and so when we first got the mixes back, and because so much of the material was just so new, we were like really workshopping it during the process, during the actual session, um, it was hard, at least for me, to really be able to kind of hear like is is this have we got something there like is this actually all right and we've spent a fair amount of time just debating whether we should actually go back into the studio and perhaps like do some more takes or perhaps just release an ep and then so, so some time passed and then and then alex Kilpatrick came back and said oh we just have a listen i haven't once i actually mixed one of these ones one of these tracks i think we'll hear that there's energy and life in there mm. and for sure he was right um but it's still and then in between that People like studying. I, I I did an MA in between. Moss is doing PhD. Everyone kind of busy with other bands and projects and life. That before you know it, it's like yeah, the months into years kind of like kind of kept kept kind of passing or passing by. But just kind of yeah, just kind of moving forward. Um, so yeah, so it does feel like it feels like even though all that time's gone by, it kind of like going back to what Moss said that there's this there can be like these periods of time where actually we don't do all that much together, but we're all doing so much as individuals. Sure. We're very fortunate being all of us to be in that position that when we do come together, it feels like there's this feeling of something that feels very comfortable about it. And, um, but then also like we've all just got some new things to say in there. So that's why I, I feel we're quite excited about, well, okay, we can't play now and it's a shame, but whenever we do play, I know it's going to be a really, fun interesting experience hopefully for other people as well yeah. and, then, and then after after that we can just i think yeah like look to think about doing some more yeah brilliant and yeah we, we certainly look forward to to finally having you guys on at the the whiskey jar as soon as we can yeah um, yeah hopefully like you say soon soon in the new year hopefully um and and ruth can you introduce us to the fifth member of let's spin there with you <laughs> this is lacy hey lacy this <laughs> name Beautiful. She's an old girl, but she's oh, lovely. Gorgeous. <laughs> she's got her back to us right now. She's yeah. I'm sort doesn't of, think much of us. I'm trying to. I'm trying to jump in it just in case she does lift her tail because I was. Excellent. 
Yeah, so so thank, thanks so much to to all of you for for joining and, and chatting today. It's been it's been a real pleasure. Um, before we before we totally wrap up, um, I've been asking everyone, could you please give us your uh, top tip each for lockdown? Whether that's something interesting you've checked out, book you've read, film you've watched, or something you're doing, and um, taken up yoga or baking sourdough or whatever the whatever the <laughs> thing is that you've <laughs> decided to spend your time with. Um, That's what I would do. You've got me. I was going to bake some sourdough. I haven't got, I haven't go. got I can't get any flour. Ah, <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, Finn, you, you kick us off with your, your top tip for everyone. My top tip? Wow. I don't, I don't know if anyone will take my advice, but um, <laughs> I've got, my top tip to myself is uh, probably just to keep some kind of schedule going for every day, keeping it the same. Um, that's been a real, uh, like, that's how I've kind of got through everything. I mean, I mean, if you have kids, maybe that's a, maybe a bit more important. Um, actually, you know, there's an idea that came to me um, from the Kita group. We have this, this the childcare, like a WhatsApp group, and someone sent through some um, schedule thing saying, you know, this is probably a good idea from some child psychiatrist guy, psychologist. Uh, but I thought, actually, that does sound like I probably should do it. And then the more uh, I researched into things and found videos about people who were, who were actually posting about how to deal with the isolation, they all said the same thing. You need some kind of schedule to get through. It wasn't just for kids, it's for adults. And then I found out uh, from my wife, Brownie, she was, we were talking and she was saying it's exactly what Nelson Mandela did when he was in prison for all those years. He says mm. he only got through that by having a very strict daily schedule, which he stuck to. Um, I'm not keeping very strict to my schedule, but there's a sort of, there's a sort of schedule that the kids know about. And we sort of picked those things together. And um, yeah, you can also break it and feel like you've been having an off day and then you can yeah. go back. Cause I think we all sort of underestimate uh, how much, you know, going to work or having things in our calendars that we have to do. Uh, kind of keep us going you know we don't want to go but actually that's something to not look forward to but something to aim for and suddenly having nothing for some people can be like a tragedy to have no plan and you can wake up feeling very just like what's the point uh, in anything like I can do anything but I don't need to do anything and then two weeks of that and you know a lot of people you can get pretty can get pretty down but that's my tip get yourself Fantastic. A sort of routine or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, that, that's beautiful, and and I also love that that in lockdown you're also feeling in some way like you can be compared to Nelson Mandela in jail. <laughs> yeah, and the, the struggle course. the struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> We're just the same. We're just totally, yeah. yeah, exactly. Thanks, Finn. Ruth. <laughs> Ruth, how about you? What's your what's your top tip for surviving lockdown? Um. Yeah, I was going to say something similar to Finn. Um, I'm going to try and say something slightly different. Um, I think just not for me it was it was really helpful not to give myself um, not to put myself under pressure mm -hmm. you know because you see like lots of people around you especially musicians that still still trying to have this output and this audience for what they're doing and for me I, I naturally didn't feel like that and just recognizing that that was okay you know, yeah. that was really, really good. And it actually allowed, it actually made me happier and more creative in that, in that way, rather than sort of, oh, I have to join in with this thing and I have to, you know, I have to be online and I have to produce music to still be a musician and, you know, all this kind of stuff that to just not give myself that pressure was really, yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks Ruth. Chris, how about you? Yeah. Um, Perhaps just, yeah, I mean, I certainly I agree with I agree with the others, and I've certainly felt similar with Ruth, and just that feeling of just of that feeling of not having a pressure there. At least in the initial few weeks, just felt just felt so good. It just felt quite mm -hmm. uh, natural in a way. But then, interesting, like kind of reflections on, well, what is it that? Like, what is this then? And actually, I'm not really missing playing. But to not feel to feel less guilty about it, even though that's something that I kind of would have anyway when I wouldn't have a gig or a house love when I sat to stay in its case, but I'd be feeling guilty in some way for not be working more on music and doing what I do. Um, but anyway, 
to, to, to that, thinking like tip wise, um, just yeah, just looking to offer something different. I think to what the other two said. Um, having just me just like actually having like writing down like, to, like little to do lists. So it's kind of this thing like having a schedule, but it's more kind of like then it's kind of like to do lists, but also kind of like keeping a journal in a way. Just of hmm. certainly I've mentioned a number of times of how I felt like really great the first few weeks, but also more recently times of just. Just, just kind of going the other way, and just it's just hard. I don't know what that feels like outside of this lockdown. Just to how to how to get up. it feels inescapable. But does this help? Just to just I've had, had those to do lists, or just to just write a little note, just to remind myself when I get up the next day, or to be like, oh, actually, I did do that thing yesterday. And so, oh no, I did do that. Okay, and there's progress. I was to see. Oh yeah, I've actually been doing some things, even their little small trivial things I have wanted to do for ages or whatever. But to see them like jot it down on this couple of sheets of paper over a couple of weeks it's like okay no things have been there have been some movement here it's not just like just to kind of actually help get you out of a, a feeling of being in a more and more dark place yeah and yeah on your own yeah well thanks thanks yeah. so much chris and and moss well i think i'm gonna get a lot less philosophical and just uh, <laughs> recommend some tv <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not I'm not a big TV person, but um, but you know it's been a nice opportunity to get into some series. And I, and I recently watched I don't know if it's been kind of hot hot news, but Normal People. Has anyone checked mm. this out? Oh yet? yeah, no, I haven't checked out, but I've seen it on. Um, so it was like, stuff, but... yeah, yeah. Mm. massive massive book um, by Sally Rooney, and they've just released it. At, is it on? I think it's net. Oh no, it's iPlayer. It's on iPlayer. Um, and it's just amazing. Great. Very, very deep insight into two people. Um, so I'd recommend that. That'll keep mm. you going for a few evenings. Um, and the other thing that I've tried, which has been really great for me, is just having a little project. Well, it's been actually a massive project. I've been, build I've been building a climbing frame for my son. Mm. Um, Nice. And it stemmed purely out of trying to give myself some relief from childcare. It's like, <laughs> if I can give him something that he can do on his own, get outside, <laughs> stop bugging me all the time. Um, <laughs> this is going to be good for everyone. But it's been really good. It's been great just to like go out into the garden and mm. just build on my own and just and to see it coming, coming together. It's, you know, it's the same as how I feel about doing a big composition or something. You know, in the middle of it, you're like, this is, gonna, this is all going to fall apart. And then it comes together beautifully. Fantastic. So that's been, that's been really fun. Great. So make a schedule, write a to-do list, chill out, don't feel the pressure and build a climbing frame. That's, uh, that's the let's spin way. So, yeah. <laughs> listen thank you so much to all of you it's been been a massive pleasure and uh look thank you massively thank you. look forward to to having you guys on at, at the whiskey jar as soon as we can and everyone needs to go and check out the new album available on Bandcamp and all the all the usual places uh and that's steal the light so go and go and check that out and uh keep safe guys and we will see you in the future take care thanks a lot guys. thanks kyron thanks so much yeah, yeah. Bye. Well, that was the fantastic Let's Spin. Please, please go and check out their latest release, Steel Delight, available on FP Records, Bandcamp, all the usual places. And while you're there, also check out their first two releases, Let's Spin and Let Go. Fantastic trove of music there to get stuck into. While you're there, why not also check out the fantastic Normal Gimbal and I Like You Bite You. You will not be disappointed. Thanks so much to Let's Spin for joining us. Please, if you have not already done so, go and check out our Patreon page where you will find all of our other podcasts and all of a whole set of concerts from great artists who have been performing for us during lockdown. And so we're very grateful to all of them. We're very grateful to all of our patrons. Take care and we'll see you again soon. All the best.